Kobe Johnson from USC. Uh, it's Jalen Johnson's little brother. Um, junior wing, 6'6", 200 pounds, averaged 9.2 points, 5 rebounds, 2.6 assists, 2.2 steals last year on 47, 36, 84 splits. Uh, definitely not a guy who you go, all right, he's going to be my number one option, my number two option, my number three option. But I think when we see these kind of wingy guys who are versatile on both ends of the floor, have that connectivity uh, as a passer, he seems like a guy that has all of the things that you like. So I'm really excited to see how he plays off of that with guys like Isaiah Collier and uh, Vincent uh, Iwachuku. And, you know, hopefully we see Bronny this year. And uh, cause I, I think the team could be a, a lot of fun and he's going to be a major reason why. Yeah. I mean, Corey, considering the fact that they have so much talent on that USC team, it's kind of crazy that they're just going to have Josh Hart on the team with them. Like, <laughs> it's I, I love Kobe Johnson, man. He's going to be one of – he is 100%, Corey. I love that we both love him. Um, he's one of my guys, man. I'm really excited to see how his game blossoms this year for USC. Um, just to start, I, I wrote Josh Hart. Like, I see so much of it in him. He's a good rebounder. Kobe Johnson's mm-hmm. a really good rebounder, tenacious on the offensive board or boards. He tracks the ball really well, just has that instinct that not everyone has. Um, also wanted to give a special shout out to a friend of the program, Drew Peterson. Yes. Him, him and Kobe were just best friends last season. The ESP <laughs> they had was unbelievable. <laughs> um, and also, like, Drew was such a damn good passer last year. He led them in assists at like 140 of them last year, um, considering, you know, the, his size and everything was great for him. And we're really excited for him. But um, with, with Kobe, just he's a filler guy. He he plugs all the holes on your team. Uh, incredible cutter. High, high level cutter. Um, like when he attacks the rim, um, his left hand is so good. Really good left hand finisher. Enjoy that. Um, the shooting 36% last year on obviously not like crazy high volume. It was like two per game, but still I'll take that 36% and the better number that we love 85% from the free throw line last year. I'll take that any day of the week. And I think his three point shooting will only improve this season playing with Collier and it would Chuku and hopefully fingers crossed Bronny as well. Um, I just so much to love two steals per game. Like we're, we're not going to get into the defense <laughs> yet, but I love this guy, man. I'm so happy we're covering him. I would, as you said, Corey, I'd love to have him on my team. So where do you want to start with him? <laughs> Cause we just did a pretty in-depth sell and breakdown, but what, what do you want to watch in, in depth on the film? I, I loved him on the defensive side of the ball. All right. We well, want to start with, uh, let's start with the defense. Um, all right, so right away, um, he's a guy you need to be able to play both sides of the ball mm-hmm. in this modern NBA, and he's a guy that is going to be able to be a versatile on-ball defender, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, nothing crazy, just stays with him. He's really good at shadowing um, you know, ball handlers, whether it's a guard, whether it's a forward, you know, here against Auburn, he's on a guy who's a little bit smaller, a little shiftier, you know, forces him into a tough shot. Some would say that's a tough shot that uh, the guards at Auburn love to take. Um, but here, you know, top 20 pick on Jaime Jaquez. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he's going to force Jaime into a really tough shot by being physical, getting into his body and shadowing, you know, his movements, you know, like, he, he does all of the things being active hands, the little swipe there right before Jaime is about to put the shot up. So I, I, I love him as an on-ball defender. I, I think if USC, if Lincoln Riley uh, went over to Kobe Johnson and said, Hey, come play cornerback for us this season at six, five, I think he'd do a great job, <laughs> do a great job. Like, as you mentioned, Corey, the shadowing is there. He contests shots so well. I love his technique when he closes out on shooters as well. Does a really good job on the ball. Doesn't fall for fakes too much. Um, really good at staying down, um, reading hips, all that old school stuff. He does it all, man. I love him on the ball. Like I, I thought he did it. But also, Corey, I thought his off-ball defense was good too, man. There were a mm-hmm. lot of times he'd be on the weak side. He's got two out there. Does a good job of just you know being alert, communicating. And 
just covering more than he was asked to. And I was like, this is really, really good stuff. But um, yeah, just I, I just love how he's contesting so many shots and active hands, two steals per game. That stuff is great. Yeah, and I, the the active hands thing, I mean, turning defense into offense, you know, being off the ball and, and understanding the positioning, like he's also going to be that defensive playmaker and where he's going to be able to get out and transition. Now, like he's not like, he he's kind of like Ron Holland where he's not like as athletic yeah. as you kind of hope or, or wish that he is, uh, but he's a good athlete, yeah. right? And he's he's great at, um, you know, turning defense and offense and, and, you know, getting easy buckets here. Very, you know, smart off ball defense. And then he leads the break. Hmm, he's a good passer, Corey. He's a good passer. He's a good passer, man. I was waiting till we got to offense, but you mentioned it there. And I have to say it like he is, especially in transition, man, the boy can, he can push the ball. He can see it all really good touch. His interior passing is awesome too, man. Like he'll mm. cut, he'll cut catch and make such quick reads and like beautiful passes to the big or a, a, like a secondary cutter. He's so damn, he's a really, really good passer. I wrote in my notes, strong passer like you can, and you can and, and at times usc would even run the pick and roll through him at times and he can make some nice passes but the interior stuff is so so you're playing one right here i love it so silky such quick decision making with him um whether it's you know him coming downhill or you know he catches it off of a cut and makes another quick decision off of that it's he's a really really good passer he is and you know he could do it where he's attacking that closeout knocked down 36% of his shots. I think it was uh, his three-point shot. So you got to kind of respect him here, you know, beats his man and then sick <sighs> read to the cutter. Come on. come on. It's a sick read, you know, like that's the type of processing speed that you love to see. Like, you know, if, if guys are going to move off the ball, he's somebody who's going to reward them and he's going to be able to make those last second improvisational reads. Um, that make him really valuable. You know, you mentioned the pick and roll stuff. It's not something he's going to do a ton of, but this is the type of stuff that's going to be valuable at this level or, you know, at uh, the next level. He's, he's just a guy who, who has that. He's going to be the, the glue, the connective piece, you know, and, and that's what we want on in, in these guys. I wish he was a little taller, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, but he's unselfish. He's got that quick processing, uh, like even when there's nothing super flashy, right? Like uh, this possession against Arizona, we're out in transition. He gets to the corner, quick one yes. more to the shooter splash. Oh, I wrote that in my notes. He's so good at the one more, man. Like just one of these guys that is thinking about it. You know, we talk about connector guys, right? Like those are those are the types of passes that you need to have. It's not that we're looking for, you know, super high level passes it's like can you make the one more do you have that instinct to make that one extra pass for that perfect look then he has that dude he's and that's why Corey, what you said before that's why i put josh hart for him because he is a little undersized you know josh yeah. hart six four six five you know listed at six five but probably closer to six four in my opinion but kobe johnson's gonna be the same way and i think he's gonna continue to develop as a shooter he's already a better shooter i think uh, than josh hart at times so <laughs> um I, it's there's a lot to love there there's a lot to love but the, the passing for me was one of the big marquee skills for him for me like you think about a guy as you mentioned Corey third fourth option type of guy if he can move the ball if he can move his body off ball if he can space the floor and shoot and then be what he is on defense how how could you not draft a guy like that and put him on your team so I'm right there with you that's a nice weak side read to sees the defender there slacking a little bit gets it out to Peterson for the easy three and it's just fantastic stuff Good looking jumper. Ah, oh, God. Yeah, I look. I I don't think he's going to be a dribble jumper guy at any level. Mm -hmm. Although, mm -hmm. hey, we're no ceilings. We don't put ceilings on these guys. However, um, I think uh, immediately if he could show this year, it's going to be important that he's as consistent as a shooter this year as he was sure. last year. Right. Yeah. The longer you stay in college, you're going to have to not only make improvements, but you know he shot twenty five percent on lower volume as a freshman. 36% uh, yeah. this year, still not on like super high volume because he's not like a 
super high usage, high volume guy in general. Um, But he's going to need to be around that mark. And if he's at 37, 38, even, even better. Right. But functionally, you know, in these scenarios, I trust him. If it's just going to be a driving quick, you slack off. He's going to confidently step right into the jumper. I I love his shot off the catch, man. I I thought his, his jumper off the catch was really tight and, um, organized and looked repeatable and good and Corey 85% from the free throw line. I love that. I hope you, as you mentioned, I hope he continues to shoot it at that level. Now I will say I am interested to see what his usage looks like this year um, without Drew Peterson on that team. Obviously Collier is going to see a lot of that ball, but just Peterson was such a good passer and a guy that really did a great job of keeping everyone involved and getting Kobe Johnson open looks. I know they they still have Boogie Ellis, right? It's like yeah. year 12 of Boogie Ellis in college basketball, um, which will be interesting to see. But um, I, I hope he, he gets more volume shooting from outside because I like the jumper. Um, and it's safe to say clearly from this pod that I like him better than I liked his brother coming out of college, which, <laughs> you know... <laughs> I was uh, probably the biggest um, uh, Jalen Johnson hater there was out there, um, which, you know, I, I I don't wish anything bad about it. But, uh, hey, he played well to end the season for the Hawks and, you know, showed a little bit in the playoffs, so good for him. But um, I just feel like with Kobe as, like, you know, third, fourth guard on your team would love a guy like that, man. And if he continues to develop and works on, you know, shooting off the dribble and maybe a little bit more with the ball handling stuff, who knows, man, he could even be like a starting two one day, like not, 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 not as like a number one option starting two, but as a guy like around two other superstars, like Josh Hart, um, that could, you know, give you good minutes on the defensive side of the ball and space the floor and, you know, move his body and connect and pass the ball and rebound and stuff. Like he's got so many good tools to him, Corey, where I, I just, I would love this guy on my team. I, I I love Kobe Johnson. Who's the second superstar next to Jalen Brunson that Josh Hart is playing between? <laughs> Two-time All-NBA guy. <laughs> Julius Randle. <laughs> oh, God. I like that. Two, two-time All NBA. All-NBA guy, Julius Randle. <laughs> oh god which you know what to julius's credit it's hard to make an all nba team man oh he's a very good player yeah. very yeah. good player very very good player um in a tough market man it's not easy i love how he moves off the ball going back to kobe yes yes i love it he's just he's just super high iq man yeah yeah different from his brother <laughs> Different. I thought his brother was really lost at times during his freshman year at Duke, but with Kobe, man, like I love how he moves, the timing on his cuts, the just av- the availability, his willingness to cut. Love it, man. Love me some Kobe Johnson. And then once again, Corey, as I mentioned before, once he's making these cuts, also like when the defense collapses on him, he's so good at passing out of that stuff. I remember there was one play, it might have been against Arizona, no, Arizona State, where he made this beautiful cut. The defense, coll- they like two, three guys on him, just this per- inch perfect bounce pass to the big for an easy dunk and i'm like that's this that's just beautiful stuff right there so i'm with you man i'm with you yeah and at the rim he was 60 percent, and then he was 63.8 percent in the half court at the rim so like those are really good numbers right those are really good numbers i love this little floater um because i I think it's like really high iq this possession like he's gonna move into the open space and then he's gonna do that little jab step and then retreat dribble into the floater to, to create the space to get that off. And then you see like the little, the soft touch and the high arcing teardrop really, really pretty. Um, but yeah, he's just a guy like no matter what the scenario is, he's always going to do his best to like move without the ball and find open space. Like even here in transition, he's going to lead the break a uh, little give and go to drew Peterson where a lot of guys give that ball up and they don't immediately get to the rim, but he knows another high level, high IQ guy. If he just keeps going, running right to that rim, he's going to give it up to get it back and create an easy bucket for himself. 
and, and Corey, I mentioned this before, but he has a really strong left hand. There were some where he was taking like little floaters with his left hand, even at times. Like it's I on this one, of course, he finishes with the right hand. Thanks a lot, buddy. Um, but um, <laughs> he he's very confident finishing with his left hand as well, which I love. So. Yeah, I, look, there is just a lot to like uh, about Kobe Johnson. And look, am I saying that Kobe Johnson is like a lock to be a first round pick? No. no, but I think that he's definitely draftable. I think that he definitely can play his way into this year's first round because if he takes the leaps that I think that that we think that he's capable of making and, you know, maybe he's instead of being at nine points maybe he's at 13 yeah. right maybe he's at six and a half rebounds maybe he's at three to three and a half assists and, uh, along with you know continued strong shooting splits uh now we're we're looking at a really valuable guy that you could all of a sudden go oh yeah at pick 20 you know maybe he's a a, a guy that uh you know the sacramento kings should be looking at in the backcourt you know who like who knows like whatever team is in that range uh that could help a you know, a, a playoff team on his rookie deal, maybe not as a rookie, but on his rookie deal, maybe he's able to put, you know, help a playoff team that drafts him, you know, in that kind of range.